We remove a microscopic sample from an area adjacent to a crack here. We mounted this sample as a cross section, and here it is um, photographed with visible and ultraviolet illumination. You have here a fragment of the ground, a yellow orangey layer, and a um, yellow particles on top. These yellow particles are associated with the final highlights in the gown. And we can see here in the photograph taken with ultraviolet illumination of this cross section that this yellow orange layer has different composition in its approximately top and bottom halves, and we'll see why, why so. We went with the Roman microscope and we looked at the particles on top first, and we found that they contain the arsenic sulfide pigment or pigment. And we, we found two other arsenic sulfide pigments in the orange yellow layer. We found pararealgar mixed with uh, particles of what we call the chi phase. We are going to see what that is towards the top of the yellow orange layer. And as we move towards the bottom of the layer, we find mainly realgar, another arsenic sulfide pigment, and pararealgar. We know that realgar, this is arsenic sulfide, that uh, is a uh, yellow, it's, it's red, uh, orangey in color, transforms when exposed to light into the yellow pigment pararealgar, that is also arsenic 4, sulfur 4. And when this transformation takes place, pararealgar goes through these compounds. It's an intermediate compound that we call the chi phase. So the fact that towards the top of the layer we see mainly pararealgar and the chi phase, and as we move towards the bottom, we start to see realgar and still some pararealgar is indicating that the appearance of the passage is due to the light-induced transformation of the uh, realgar originally used by Veronese. We know that Veronese used pararealgar as such in other paintings, such as the Adoration of the Kings in the National Gallery in London. But this is not the case here. In this painting, Veronese originally used realgar, and the pararealgar present there is due to the transformation of the pigment uh, originally used. Now Mars and Venus, we we'll start by looking uh, at the canvas support. It's again two uh, vertical strips. It's a fine plane with canvas. The ground preparation is, as in the case of the freak allegories, is a warm pink color ground, but the main component is anhydrite mixed with gypsum, as you may remember. Wisdom and strength had anhydrite, and Viltron White had gypsum. This one has anhydrite mixed with gypsum, as in the case of the Freak allegories, the uh, red color in the ground preparation was achieved by mixing red lead and iron oxide. And as in the case of Viltron Weiss, there's no imprimatura in this painting. Though uh, most uh, pigments in this painting have survived in an almost pristine condition, it had long been debated that the abrupt transition in the sky from the lower part that looks greenish towards the upper part that looks uh, of a deeper blue was not intended by the artist. And uh, analysis of the pigment has shown that this is in fact true. And let's see how uh, each um, area was built up. We have this sample here removed from this uh, greenish area here. Um, and we found that Veronese started by applying ashurite and lead white first and then a layer that contains mainly smalt that is now deteriorated with a few ashurite particles. Elemental analysis showed us that this smalt has a composition that is consistent with the composition of glass and enamel from the period. Uh, while on the upper part, on the darker area of the sky, we have the ground preparation, we have ashurite and lead white and smalt. But over the smalt that is now deteriorated, we have ultramarine blue. So before the small deteriorated here in the lower part of the sky, it must have had the function to shift the greenish hue of the asteroid towards a truer blue, and it must have made a transition from the greenish to the deeper, brighter blue in the upper part more gradual. 
the darkening and loss of form in Venus's mantle is also, also due to the um, deterioration of the small pigment use. This is a micro sample that we remove approximately from this location. It's a little bit dark in the, in the slide, but um, this um, paint uh, contains mainly deteriorated smalt. Veronese mix up their particles of uh, the blue pigments, ashurite and ultramarine blue, ultramarine blue here and ashurite there, and the red pigments, vermilion and red lead. So this composition is telling us that this mantle must have been a deep, rich purple before deterioration, um, before the small deteriorated. And um, finally, um, we were uh, interested to see uh, whether the um, leaves in the upper uh, right uh, corner of the painting that uh, today look brownish were really uh, meant to look that way by the artist. And we found that um, no, they weren't. They were in fact meant to be bright green. The analysis of the paint uh, showed that um, this, the, the, the green in the leaves, the original green in the leaves was, was achieved by mixing copper resonate, that's a green pigment, and a, lead, and, and a yellow pigment, a uh, leptin yellow type two. The paint, the green paint is, or the brown paint now is what you see here on top. You have the yellow particles of the leptin yellow, and these brown particles that um, are the copper resonate that was originally green and has now turned brown. The duration of a copper resonance is a process that we commonly observe in, in, in paintings. But on the other hand, we found that um, the leaves that are right over Venus's head that are yellow were never meant to be green. They were meant to be yellow. They only contain the yellow pigment left in yellow type two and no green pigments. So, um, the similarities uh, in the technique used for the three paintings, for example, the consistent use of a light pink color ground and the complex built up of the skies with the ashurite in the underlayers, is not surprising given that the three paintings date from approximately the same period in Veronese's career, though the uh, use of very different materials for the supports and the construction of the grounds strongly suggests that um, the three paintings were conceived as individual works. We, we were surprised to see that uh, color grounds have been used in these paintings, but um, this, is, this is in fact consistent with the trend for the increased use of color grounds in the second half of 16th century uh, in Venice, particularly by Tintoretto, Bassano, their workshops and followers. The um, earlier studies have reported uh, the, um, the use of three blue pigments that we have seen here, the small, Ashurite and ultramarine blue, for example, in paintings by Veronese in the National Gallery in London. A small was used, only small was used uh, for the skies in the family of Darius. Small glaze with ultramarine was used in the consecration of Saint Nicholas. Ashurite was used in the adoration of the kings. In other collections, for example, for the marriage feast at Cana, now at the Louvre, Veronese was required by, uh, to use uh, ultramarine by contract, but on comparable works like Feast in the House of Livy in Galleria dell'Accademia, he only used Ashurite. So the particular way in which Veronese used these blues to construct the skies in, in these paintings uh, appears to be unique. Um, I'm going to stop here, uh, and I'm going to invite you to go uh, and explore all these issues in front of the paintings in the galleries. Um, Mars and Venus is on display in this uh, uh, museum. And a virtual advice of wisdom and strength is on display in the free collection in Fifth Avenue and 70th Street. And I hope uh, you enjoy uh, looking at them closely uh, as much as uh, we did during the course of our investigation. And I'll leave you with uh, images of uh, my colleague Dorothy Mount cleaning the surface of um, virtual advice and uh, Mark Wipiski in the scanning electron microscope. Uh, thank you.